I always say like siblings fussing, you know, <laughs> brothers and sisters fussing against each other. That should not be because what we don't realize is that the world is looking at us. And when they see us fussing, see, that's why I don't want to be saved. That's why I don't go to church. You see what I'm saying? You're giving people more yeah. reasons as to why they don't want to be saved or they don't want to become a part of the kingdom of God. But if we come together and we start praying together, even though we know that this is not um, uh, the will of God, you know, this is not the, the act of God, but we do know that God's hand is in it and he is in total control of it. He'll take care of us. But we have got to come together in unity. We have got That's to do that. That is so true. We do have to come together in unity. And I saw on Facebook where you had the quartet groups, you know, signing up to do the live concerts and stuff. And I have been watching every one of them. And that is a, that's huge because a lot of times people don't realize that, you know, these buildings out here that we go into, you know, that's, that's what they are. But the church is inside of us. How do Absolutely. you feel? Absolutely. How do you mm-hmm. feel as far as, like, seeing the quartet? Because we know that quartet, um, we just being real, quartet doesn't necessarily have a good, clean image out there right now and right. hasn't had one, you know, for the longest. But how can we be the church in this season that we're in to help reach those that, you know, are lost, those that are are really having to get on that front line because we have a lot of quartet singers that are nurses, that are Mm -hmm. doctors, you know, that are essential workers. How can we reach them right now? The way that we can reach them is, like I said earlier, through music, through the word of God. Uh, And I'm not just saying this to be bragging. The songs that I've written, my mother conditioned me and trained me. Whatever you write, let it be Bible-based. Don't don't be out there just be saying, woe is me, and then don't direct people to what they can do. So when you, if you have the ability in your songs, whatever song, listen to music that's going to uplift and bring you out of this. Because if we don't, we'd be so careful to become depressed. And then those shuns start coming, oppression, depression, you know, uh, even to the point to where somebody want to take their life. All those shuns will start coming because what happened is our spirit man becomes low. So you got to build the spirit man up through the word of God, find the teachings. You know, I'm pretty sure there's some, some, some good saved Holy Ghost field ministers and teachers and preachers that are out there that are delivering the word of God. And that's how we're going to make it. Right now, it's the, the pivotal time. You remember, and there's the Bible where it says you got to hide the word in your heart. Uh-huh. That's where we at right now. The word of God that's hidden in your heart that you've been listening to ever since we were little kids. If you're like me, and I grew up in church, ever since Sunday school, start pulling those things out. God, you said in your word, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Take him in, just like the word say, put him in remembrance of his word. Do that and uplift your uplift your spirit. You're going to have to do this because there's, I'm just going to say it, in America, we, we have gotten a little lackadocious. We got a little lazy. We depend on people to prophesy to us instead of uh-huh. prophesying over ourselves. We depend on t- folks to, to pray for us. And I'm saying this out of experience myself. I love my parishioners. I love the people that I hang around with. But sometimes, can you pray for me? No, Pookie, at this time, you're going to need to pray for yourself. You're going to have to save yourself. It's going to be, that's where we at right now, at this time, that you're going to have to develop that family relationship, that, that, that relationship with God, the relationship with your children. I look at this time as a time to reset everything in your life. I don't care how long you've been saved. Take this time to inventory yourself. See where you are at. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and everybody can use a push. Everybody can use a lift. Everybody can lose a, use a, a glory to glory. Go, go from, from wherever you are now and go up higher. Because for some reason <laughs> in this world, we're at this position. Because somebody wasn't on their on their on their pole, you know, wasn't wasn't praying or doing something. I just believe that, and so we know that we're in the last days. Perilous times are going to come. There's some things that's going to happen. You can't pray it away. So this is the time where you really got to know God for yourself. 
Amen. I truly do agree with that. You really got to know them because I tell you, if you mm-hmm. suffer with anxiety, depression, any of that stuff that, that reoccurs, oh you have to be strong enough in the faith to fight it. And I know oh last week, I mean, a couple of weeks ago when this first started, you know, by me being media, I am in the back scenes of the World Health, Health Organization and also the CDC. So I know what's coming in before it hits the public. And I wow. just took in so much that I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I did a broadcast, and I was trying to get my broadcast out. But at the same time, I was trying to tell people back in February, look, this thing is here. You need mm-hmm. to be right with God now. Don't wait till tomorrow. You need to be preparing your yourself internally and also preparing your household. Don't just sit there and think that it's all about you because it's not. When you got in the flesh, that's when you become strong. And I noticed that my flesh had got weak that day, and I started having anxiety. And I had to call on God. And what, your song was the one that actually helped lift me out of that because, I, like I said, I pray it all the time. You got the word. So um, how did you come about writing that song? Because, like I said, Sometimes we do get weak, and, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes we get consumed with the things of this world, and we'll find mm-hmm. ourselves conforming, and then we hear that word that straightens us, mm-hmm. puts, us back, puts us back on course. So how did you come mm-hmm. up with that song? Oh, man, that is so awesome. To be honest, uh, Miss Coco, this is how it came about. I, myself, personally have been dealing with challenges in my body for, I would say, maybe 10 years or more. I um, I had weight loss surgery, and before I had the surgery, the reason why I had it was not like people say, but look cute. <laughs> I was having some physical challenges. So the Lord healed me from that. I had sugar diabetes, and I had heart problems. I had high blood pressure. Got Got through all of that, sis. Then all of a sudden, I started having back problems, had to have back surgery. Then I had this surgery, that surgery. I, and I have had, oh, my gosh, probably, and I'm talking about minor and major surg- surgeries, about, I would say, about 20 surgeries. But like I said, I wrote this song in 2004. I hadn't been through nothing, haven't had not no surgery, nothing at all. But God reminded me of that song. And he said, this this is the time now because the word of God is what I stood on. When every time I would go through my surgery, I was like, I don't want to go through nothing. And my husband had to talk me, baby, you got to go through this. this is, I mean, some of them was detrimental, like life and death. I had to have it or else, you know. <laughs> and I was like, God, okay, I'm going to stand on your word because your word, when you don't have nothing else, like I said in my song, when you don't have nothing else, you can stand on the word of God. I'm seeing about to cry now because I'm telling you, every that song is what really saved me. And I trusted God and and then I put it together. Like I said, laid it down in the wax and all that good stuff in, in twenty nineteen. And uh I just thank God I had even had two surgeries in that year of last year. Oh, <laughs> um, two major surgeries last year, but God God did it, and and I just thank God he healed me, and it was through the word of God. That is an awesome testimony. Who would have thought? I mean, you know, really just looking at you and watching how you promote your work and stuff, Mm -hmm. you don't look like what you've been through. You do not look like Hallelujah. Clearly the smoke did not linger. And the only way smoke does not linger is when we trust and have faith in the Lord. And definitely that song, it will pull it will pull you up out of some of the darkest places. I remember when you first sent it to me, I was like, let me check her out, see what she got going on here. And it was just, when I heard it, it was amazing. I have, I have played it every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. <laughs> on UG and Amen. Gospel storm and we have it playing over in australia and south africa oh, and natal we have it playing in germany and china all those places so um oh, they're getting the word too through and by your song and that's mm. a blessing because you don't that really is. look like what you've been through i would have never known oh. that 
tell you said something. Wow. Oh, man, thank you so much. God, to God be the glory. Yes. So what you got going on next? I mean, I I know that you got some new things coming about, and I know, although you know, we look, it looks like it looks now in the world. We know God is able, and we have to continue moving forward. So, what do you have going on? Well, I tell you what, um, we did have schedule, and we are still looking um, before the years out. We had our live recording schedule, you know, during the Spell Awards. Um, but we got it changed, you know, to August. Uh, we're still going to go, Lord willing, and like my grandma would say, the creek don't rise. <laughs> we should be there in Las Vegas. Um, but we got that schedule. We're going to do a, lot, a live set there. Um, and we also are getting ready to, and I'm nervous about this, getting ready to go on radio Um to basically promote not only and definitely not just unity, but ladies of gospel. Because what I notice, even in in the quartet field, sometimes ladies, we get slighted, you know, and I'm that person, I'll be that trailblazer to say, you know, hey, we need to support each other. We need to, whenever nobody else want to support, let's bring, let's build each other up. So I'm doing a ladies of gospel um, with the local radio station here um, in the area where I live, um, that's going to start on Saturday mornings. Um, So I'm excited about that. And like I said, we got the live recording, and we have some dates on the book, a whole bunch of dates, but some things got canceled and, you know, all that. But we're going to just trust God. That's just trust God. You know, I I was thinking about that. So um, first first question I got for you is why did you choose to go to Las or are you choosing to go to Las Vegas to um, <laughs> do the live recording? I mean, I um, know the type of person you is, but, you know, people listening may not know. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. The reason why is because I'm, uh, we got signed with Triset Records, hallelujah, and that is with um, um, Apostle Teresa Jordan as the leader, CEO, and founder of Praise Factor Awards. I met her, like you, like you said, some years ago, and we connected then. And she wanted to sign me, I'm going to tell you a little short story, about two or three years ago. But I was like, nah, you know, I was nervous, didn't want to do it. So I just kind of watched her, and I think she kind of watched me too. <laughs> but um, that's the reason why we chose theirs, because she's going to actually, she, um, her team is putting together the uh, the things to go there. And um, and she's, she's going to have the execs there and, you know, all the producers and everyone would uh, automatically be there at that one time. And so that was the reason why we had chose the Spell Awards. That is so awesome. And <laughs> shout out to um, Pastor Teresa Jordan because me, her, and Pastor Wendy, we're actually co-hosts on the Gospel Talk. With Stephanie yes, McDonald, yes. absolutely <laughs> so beautiful, y'all beautiful. No, start listening to Stephanie McDonald's show, The Gospel Talk, and you can get all three of us on there. Amen. Yes, so yes, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's a wonderful thing right there to see Quartet, especially from North Carolina, moving around like that. Which part of North Carolina are you from, by the way? My hometown is Fayetteville, North Carolina. But I actually live in this little area. It's the countryside of Wilson, and it's called Elm City, North Carolina. It's called what? Elm. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Elm City, E-L-M, Elm City. And I don't know why they call it Elm City, because it is actually should be called Elm Country. <laughs> but uh, it's on the other side of Wilson, North Carolina. <laughs> Country. Yes. So I'm not, I'm at the country down here too in Candor. We're probably oh my like um, born and I raised know. country, honey. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you do the pig feet and collard greens and all that. You stuff. better believe it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Chitlins too. <laughs> I know that's uh, right. I know that's yes, right. Yes, indeed. We're gonna have I to love get together it. one day and, and do us a whole country meal. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wow. Well, I do thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with little old me and my first guest here oh. on Who's Who's Interview. You are the first one of the year in two years. That is major. Oh, <laughs> that is so awesome. major. 
And I feel mm-hmm. so blessed to have you as a friend, a co-worker, a colleague in the ministry. 